Right behind me is the real-life Dark Star aircraft that was used on set during the opening scene of Top Gun Maverick. This hypersonic concept jet was actually designed by Lockheed Martin's Top Secret Skunk Works Division. Well, today I hope you brought your Top Gun gear, because we're getting an up-close look at Dark Star to learn what went into designing this aircraft. As well as how important hypersonic technology is for the future. Now, I'm excited to introduce you to Skunk Works engineer Brian Hirschberger, who also just so happens to be the lead on the Dark Star project. Now, Brian, I've got a lot of questions for you. But right off the bat, for all the viewers out there, can this thing actually fly? Is there a real-life flyable Dark Star out there somewhere? Sam with Movie Magic, this can fly, but in the real world. This is a mock-up of our hypersonic airplane concept for the Top Gun movie. But what it represents, really, is our leading edge in hypersonics and how Lockheed Martin and the Skunk Works are really pushing the boundaries of hypersonics. And this is a futuristic vision of what that could be someday. Now, I know we've mentioned this word hypersonics several times. I also know it's probably going to frame a lot of what we're talking about today. So for all the viewers out there, can you explain what is hypersonics? Well, you've probably heard a lot about subsonic and supersonic. Hypersonic is actually Mach 5. Wow, Mach 5 is a mile per second. So if you think about trying to go cross country, taking off from Los Angeles and making it to New York, you make it there in 45 minutes. Now imagine in Top Gun where Maverick's going Mach 10 and how insane that must be. Now, before we take a closer look at Dark Star, I am curious, what was the process like working with Paramount Pictures on Top Gun Maverick, and really how that came to be? Well, so after Paramount reached out because of Lockheed Martin's leadership position in hypersonics, they paired us up with Daniel Simon, who is a graphic designer who does a lot of concepts in movies. You've probably seen some of them, you don't know what they are. So we worked with him and our conceptual design team to come up with some ideas. We bounced ideas back and forth and iterated, and we came up with, I think, iteration 43, which you see sitting here in front of us today. And it's like, what better place to go for a futuristic hypersonic jet than Skunk Works? I'm sure it was like a perfect match for Paramount and for you guys. The project was awesome. It was a great interaction, and I think everybody on both sides is really proud of the product we were able to produce in terms of how it's made an impact on people's vision of the future, and what a great movie. Sam, the first thing you'll notice when we're looking towards the front of the Dark Star is how highly swept it is and how sleek it is. That's what you see when you go really fast, right? You've got a lot of air coming around and you want to be like. On top of that, we bury the cockpit. Unlike most cockpits that sit up a little bit, we bury it down. And if you actually know what our X-59 demonstrator is, that's doing supersonic boom technology. Similar design, it's getting that forward vision in different ways, but still being able to see out the sides a little bit. And I love how it still has the Captain Pete Mitchell Maverick, and also, it's interesting to me, it doesn't look like you can see out the front. Right. So you've got the side view which I know in the movie, he had it kind of built into display, but it's an interesting view. Absolutely. But there's technology that can allow you to do that. Now, Brian, in the movie, 
when Maverick is about to approach Mach 10. We start to see the cockpit glass heating up. And I love that attention to detail that was included. So I'm curious, from your perspective, what would you say are those main challenges that heat and friction present when going at hypersonic speeds? So Sam, remember Mach 5 is where we start to see hypersonics be defined. And it's defined there because that's when air starts to break down because of how fast you're going. You start to see plasma show up around the airplane, just like on the space shuttle re-entry. So what that means is you have to have materials that can survive these intense temperatures. You have to still build them light enough to be able to fly. So it takes a whole lot of development and technology in terms of how you build the craft to make it survive the environment. So in the movie, obviously, we had Maverick flying, but to my understanding, the future of hypersonics is largely unmanned. So I'm curious, from your perspective, do you ever think we will have a pilot in the cockpit of something going hypersonic? Well, Sam, remember we talked a little bit about the Space Shuttle? Space Shuttle would over Mach 20 and we entered the atmosphere. It had people in it. It is possible, but in terms of the mission, it really depends on what the mission needs. Thank <laughs> you.